Let's integrate square root of tangent x over sine of 2x. Here we have two troubles. First, you see that we have tangent and sine in an integral. That's not what we would like, okay? Usually, we like to have sine and cosine in an integral. And maybe you want to have tangent. In that case, you want to have a secant, okay? Sine, cosine, or tangent, secant. So, I am going to fix the tangent x. And the other trouble is that we have sine of 2x. You see, this is the double angle. This tangent was just x, but this was a 2x. So we are going to break this apart. And let's just get to work on fixing both of those two parts. So this is the integral on the top. This is the square root for tangent x. That's ready as sine x over cosine x. And then for the denominator, sine of 2x, we know the double angle identity for the sine. That's going to be 2 sine x cosine x. OK? And now you see this integral is just dealing with sine and cosine. And all the angles right here are the same. So it seems pretty good at the moment, right? And now let's fix the numerator here. This is the same as square root of sine x over square root of cosine x. And we can put down the square root of cosine x uh, down below in the denominator. So this is going to be the integral. And then let's put down the 1 half in the front. On the top, let me just write it as square root of sine x over the 2 is out right here already. We have this sine x here, this cosine here. But then for the square root of cosine x, let me put it down right here in the denominator as well. And this is the x, like that. So far, so good, huh? And now what? Well, we know this square root of sine x and the sine x right here, we can simplify that, right? Square root over the original to the first power, you know you have a square root in the denominator. So let me fix that right here for you guys. This is the 1 half integral. On the top, I will just have 1 over this and that reduced to square root of sine x on the denominator. Okay, And then we have this cosine x, and then we have the square root of cosine x here. Okay, So that's what we have. And there's a reason I didn't multiply them together, like combine the power and things like that. I just don't want to do that at the moment. Um, the reason is because I tried it before, it didn't work. And let's see, what can we do? Um, the trouble is, even though right here we have sine and cosine, but the number of them is on the numerator. For example, if I have to have uh, maybe a cosine factor or sine factor on the top, maybe this is going to be a different approach. But then on the top, it's just a 1, so uh, that's not so good. This is how I'm going to do it. I am going to look at the denominator right here. Okay, I'm going to look at the denominator right here. Just pretend just denominator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to produce, I'm going to get rid of the square root of cosine x. Not I get rid of, but then I want to multiply this by itself again. But I cannot just do that, right? And I don't want to multiply the square root of cosine x on the top. What I'm going to do is, you know I can multiply this right here. In the meantime, I can divide. But then, let me put down the division right here. Square root of cosine x. Okay, and the reason for this is that if you look at this right here, you will end up with tangent. And then this right here, I can put it on the top and it becomes secant. So in fact, I have to secretly <laughs> change this back into an integral that deals with sine, no, I mean secant and tangent. <laughs> so let's get to work. I still have the 1 half in the front, and then that's still the integral. We haven't done any integration steps yet, okay? This is 1 over sine x over cosine x. And by the way, this is legitimate because I divided and multiplied it, they cancel out. It's just a 1, okay? This right here is just tangent in the square root, so let me put that down right here. That's the new things that we end up with. And then let's pay attention to here. This is cosine x times cosine x in the square root, right? Square root, square root. So altogether, this is 
a regular cos x times another regular cos x. So together we have cosine square x in the denominator. And then you see this. I can bring it up and it becomes secant. So this is going to be one half integral. Let me bring this up to the top. So I have secant square x and then the bottom is square root of tangent x and that's dx. Deal. And now what? I have tangent x here. The root of the tangent x is secant square x and have that on the top. So we know u sub will do the work for us. And let's do that. Then u equals to tangent x. du will be secant square x dx, right? And up to you, I would still like to isolate the dx for you guys. So dx divided both sides by this, we get du over secant square x. And now we see this is going to be the integral. We still have the one half right here. Integral secant square still on the top over this is going to be square root. Tangent x is the u. And then dx is that du over secant square x. And you see this and that will cancel out. And now we are ready to integrate. So let's put it down right here. This is going to be equal to 1 half, still in the front. Integral, they cancel out. This is the integral in the u world. This is pretty much 1 over square root of u. And let me write it down as u to the negative 1 half du. And how do we integrate this? This is the power, so we just do the power rule backwards. Let's add one first. Negative one half plus one is positive one half. And we have to divide it by the new exponent. Dividing by one half is the same as multiply by two over one. And you see one half, two over one cancel. So this is going to be u to the one half power. And uh, we can, uh, let me just write it down like this, right? u to the one half power. And what's u? u is tangent. And we can write the one-half power as a square root, and that u is tangent x. So the answer is square root of tangent x. And then we are done. Put a plus c, and that's it.